Hi guys. Today we're going to have a look at the Fanatec CSL Elite load cell pedal kit, which includes three pedals. Now, if you have the original CSL Elite kit, then this adds in a load cell pedal and your original brake pedal becomes the clutch. Now I've had this kit for a few months now and I've had an opportunity to use it and abuse it and decide what I like and what I don't like about it and little modifications that I've made for a quality of life improvement with the pedal set. So the CSL Elite kit comes in two boxes. You have the Elite pedals, which are the clutch and accelerator, or if you didn't have the LC kit, just the brake and accelerator. And then the separate box is the LC pedal, the new brake pedal. Opening up the box for the standard kit, we have a quick guide, show you how to get started with the CSL Elite pedals. And we're presented with a very chunky base plate, which is quite nice to see. A well-packaged couple of pedals, the cable for plugging into your steering wheel, some screws. Let's see if I can get one of these pedals out. Well packaged. Nice Fanatec logo stamped on it. And a couple of tools. So we have a spanner here, which is a 15 mil and a 13 mil. And then we have an Allen key. Again, the tools are pretty well made, so they're, they're not going to just strip off straight away. Moving on to the LC box, we have yet more Fanatec stickers and another quick start guide. We have the pedal itself, a new control box and a USB cable. So the new control box adds in the clutch. I believe it also adds in a handbrake and the USB cable and packers are for making some adjustments. We have some bolts in here as well for fitting it to the base. All good stuff. So let's move on to assembling this. We first have to fit the control board on the base with the additional inputs and see them through this wrapper. Once we've done that, we start bolting on the pedals, attaching them to the control board. So once we get onto the brake pedal, we have to make a decision on how stiff we want this thing. You might be able to see on these some numbers. That's basically how hard they are. Those were 85 and these are 95, I believe. Yeah, there you go, 95. And we have to pack them on here. Now I did away with this foamy bit because I felt it didn't really offer much. It just disappears straight away. Once we're happy with everything, we have to make sure the connectors are fitted and then mount it to our rig. And here are the pedals in their natural habitat on my wheel stand classic, which I no longer use. And this is where the pedals now sit in my GT Omega Prime rig. You might notice that they're looking a little different to what they did back in the assembly days. So now what I've done is I've swapped over the throttle and clutch pedal so that I've got a stiffer spring on the throttle pedal. I don't use the clutch right now, so it wasn't really a concern for me. And I've also taken off the rubber front to the throttle pedal so I can slide my foot up and down. Where I, I use socks right now um, and we we'll see that as I'm racing. So I guess the question is, are these pedals worth it really? Are they much better than the G29 pedals that I had before? Will they make you faster? 
and how they compare to others around the same price bracket. Well, this is all going to depend on where you're coming from and what your budget is. There are other load cell pedals that are slightly cheaper than this. Frostmaster make one such product, which is, I think, the only one at that price range, unless you get the load cell uh, pedal secondhand. In which case, if you're, you're on a very tight budget, I'd probably recommend those, assuming that you're in the Frostmaster ecosphere. Otherwise, these are a very good pedal. And whilst I've had to modify them a little bit for my own comfort, and you might notice my feet are quite big against these even in socks. They're still much more comfortable in prolonged use compared to the G29 pedals, which are considerably smaller. The rubber grippy um, fronts to them that are removable, they're okay. They don't really give much, but they had too much friction for me on the, the throttle pedal. The brake, whilst I do get better muscle memory, with um, the positioning of my foot on the pedal. I do find that my, my foot kind of rides up a little bit on them. And I also find that it's hard to modulate that pressure. So it is helpful, but I didn't find it to be a game changer for me, at least when going from the G29 pedals to these. In terms of where they are price wise, they're a very good pedal set to have as you're moving towards something better. I mean, if this is your top end price range, it's still a great pedal set, but there are better out there for a little bit more. If you think you're gonna have budget for something more exotic, then I would save your money and get that product rather than waste it on this interim. I'm not saying these are a bad pedal set, but there's no point in taking that baby step first if you are committed to getting something better anyway. So I do recommend these pedals, but I don't do so wholeheartedly. I do have some reservations about them. For example, the throttle is far too light for me and maybe I do have clown feet, but it's still very light. Even when I switch it over to the clutch pedal, which is a slightly stiffer spring. The brake pedal is pretty good. I've now got it close to the maximum on its load cell capabilities but I think I if I'm wearing shoes this isn't gonna be able to cater for my lead footedness I can't really comment on the clutch because I haven't really used it as a clutch and I won't be able to until I get room for a H pattern shifter which is not anytime soon so with that out of the way thank you for watching this mini review I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have, please like this video and subscribe to my channel where you will find more content like this coming soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.